everybody and welcome back to another episode of Vlogmas. Today is Vlogmas Day 13 and if you guys have been watching all of the Vlogmas episodes, thank you so much. If you're new and don't know who I am, I'm Cindy Forsyth and right now I'm posting every day. So definitely go check out some of my other videos and make sure to subscribe and turn on those post notifications. I post every day at 5.30 Mountain Standard Time. The end of the year is approaching, which means it is time to make my annual list of the best binge-worthy Netflix shows that I know of. <laughs> so I did this video last year, I'm doing it again this year, and TV shows are something I get very, very passionate about because I get so attached to the characters, so just expect me to kind of go off here. I have a long list that I made, and a lot of them are shows I've seen, but I also got suggestions from you guys and friends and family, so there's some that I don't know, but are great recommendations, and I will probably be watching. Oh, what a good year 2020 was to have a good show to watch. Honestly, the only thing reliable was a good show. First show is my favorite show in the whole world. I have two shows that are tied for my favorite, and the number one spot goes to The 100. If you have not seen The 100 already or haven't heard of it by now, you're just missing out. So it's kind of like a post opti what's the? Post-apocalyptic? Is that the right word? Dystopia? Is that the right word? Am I even saying the right words? Anyway, basically Earth got blown up and it's been like 150 years and they send 100 kids down to Earth because they're living in space to see if it's survivable. And things just go absolutely wild. There's seven seasons. A lot of people say that only season one through four are good. I think every season is good just because I love the characters, I love the shows. So many favorite characters. Bellamy, oh my gosh. Lexa, oh my gosh, Octavia. Okay, I'm just speechless. Like there's too many good characters to not love this show. I'm at the point where I'm stalking them all in real life and like, you know, I, I just finished it so I'm really excited about it. I honestly think this is a really good show because it does have a little bit of drama and romance, but it's mostly like fighting and war and just, it really pulls at your emotions, it makes you angry. Even the writers said that this wasn't supposed to be an uplifting show, it was supposed to just like pull out all these emotions like anger, sadness and like just stuff like that. You're in for a wild ride and lots of cliffhangers. Seven seasons on Netflix, The 100. Next up, I don't even have to explain, but I will, Vampire Diaries. There are eight seasons, only six of them being good, but I love Vampire Diaries. I'm Team Damon and it's just the best show ever. Out of all the shows, I feel like there's so many that kind of go in this category that you could kind of hold up Vampire Diaries against. Vampire Diaries is the best one. I gave it a shot like two years ago and was hooked. I'm addicted. It's so good. Basically, there's vampires, there's werewolves, there's witches. Oh, it's just, it's so good. I don't, it's a love story, it's a drama, it's, oh. I still follow Nina Dobrev on Instagram and I don't really follow like celebrities on Instagram, so it just shows how good the show was. So here's two big shows that were big in 2020 and if you didn't watch them, you should. Starting with Tiger King, I know everyone's seen it, but seriously, if you haven't, it's just so ridiculous and entertaining. It takes place in Oklahoma, I think, which hits close to home because I'm from Missouri, neighbor states, you know. Basically just a bunch of rednecks who have tigers, hence Tiger King. And there's like legal drama. It's, just, it's really good, honestly. And the fact that it's like a real life scenario, it's a documentary basically, it just makes it even better. So definitely watch it if you haven't. It's not overhyped in my opinion. And the other like really big one of 2020 was Outer Banks. It's a pretty like basic show as far as like kind of has mediocre actors, mediocre plot line until you get to like episode six or something and it just goes downhill and you're just like what is happening and then you're hooked. So like the first five episodes is like okay cool and then you're like okay okay what's gonna happen what and it's kind of one of those teen dramas where it's like okay obviously like that's not gonna happen but it's just like it's just a good one get your mind off things right now there's only one season but i think they already started filming the second one so you definitely want to watch the first one before the second one comes out next up i can't remember if this was more of like a 2019 thing but lock and key i binged this so fast so there's like a mansion there's a family that moves into it because it's like a it's like a family home there's these keys that each do different like magic things and then 
and there's like everything just connects and I don't know how to explain this show without spoiling it but there's like this bad person trying to get the keys and you don't want them to get the keys there's a huge plot twist at the end there's lots of cliffhangers and it's really good it's a little bit of drama a little bit of action a little bit of mystery a little scary honestly but overall just really good show lock and key this year season two of the umbrella academy came out and it's so good the first season it was amazing basically there are 11 is it 11 kids i think there's like seven or eight i don't remember how many kids but basically this guy he's like a scientist he adopts them and they all have special powers like one of them is like strong and one of them um i can't even remember what they do but they all have a superpower it's just i mean who, like that has to be a good show it's like a bunch of adopted kids who have superpowers and then season two is really cool because it's kind of like it takes place in the 50s so that was fun i don't really know how to explain it. it's just good i would definitely watch it um it's a little slow getting into it but once you are into it binge worthy so i don't know if this is a new show but i just discovered it and it's called the order it is potentially binge worthy it's one of those shows once again that kind of has like mediocre acting and the plot line gets a little uh eh, here and there but I think overall that it is a good show. It's a good one to just like throw on while you're getting ready or like if you're tired, throw it on. And it could potentially be Avenge Ridley. Basically, there's a college. Kids in this college get recruited into a secret society who does magic and they're called the Order. There's just a lot of stuff that goes down and then there ends up being werewolves who can like sense magic. I hope that didn't spoil anything, but just go watch it. It's a good one. This is nothing new, just like Vampire Diaries, but I recently rewatched Gossip Girl. If you still haven't seen it yet, it's just so good. It's so binge worthy. It's definitely just strictly drama and love stories and drama and more drama and more drama. Do I even need to explain Gossip Girl? They all live in New York, Upper East Side. There's like the poor kids from Brooklyn and they all go to a perfect school. And then yeah, drama, 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 drama. But it's a really good show. I ship Nate and Serena in the end and I'm still pissed about the end, but we'll talk about it later. Another show that I feel like got popular this year is called Lucifer and I found this to be really good. I still haven't finished it because I always get halfway through a show and then start watching another one for some reason. But basically the devil comes to LA for a vacation from hell. He owns like a nightclub and then he gets invested in this girl and he wants to help out her and so therefore he ends up helping out the police this girl like doesn't believe that he's the devil getting people to tell him their darkest secrets so therefore he can pretty much like solve cases and yeah basically it's like kind of a love story drama lucifer himself comes to earth and just wants to vibe as a person so it's pretty entertaining i would recommend i can't remember if this show is on netflix so i'm so sorry if it's not but it's called good girls and it's these three moms and they basically end up getting involved in illegal activities. It's just really funny. My sister-in-law showed it to me and I can't really like remember a lot of stuff so that's really all I have to say. I think there's three seasons. But yeah, go check it out. It's funny, it's entertaining, it's a good one. Okay, now these are shows that I haven't seen so I don't have the greatest descriptions but I've heard that they are really good. First is The Purge, the TV series. My cousin recommended this to me. She said it's amazing. I wanna watch it, kinda see how it goes. I know nothing about it, but I've seen the movies and the movies were good, so. Peaky Blinders, this is like my husband's favorite show that he's been watching. Pretty sure it takes place in the olden days. I know nothing about it. You know what, I'll just look up like the description of it. Okay, Britain is a mixture of despair in 1919 in the aftermath of the Great War, returning soldiers Newly minted revolutions and criminal gangs are fighting to survive. One of the most powerful gangs of the time is Peaky Blinders, run by the returning war hero Thomas Shelby and his family. But Thomas has bigger ambitions than just running the streets. When a crate of guns goes mi missing, he recognizes an opportunity to advance in the world because crime may pay, but legitimate businesses pays matter. Trying to rid Britain of its crime is Inspector Chester Campbell, who arrives from Belfast to try to achieve the goal. So I heard of that, it's really good. So definitely go check it out. It's not a new one, but I just heard of it. So next up, and on my last video, a lot of people recommended this. This show's been around for a bit, but it's Annie with an E. Is it Anne with an E or Annie with an E? Wish I knew, but I don't because I've never seen it. So, the reimagining of the classic book and film is a coming of age story about a young orphan who is seeking love, acceptance, and her place in the world. A 13-year-old has an abusive childhood in orphanages 
and the homes of strangers. Annie is mistakenly sent to live with aging siblings. Annie, who proves, proves to be uniquely spirited, imaginative, and smart, transforms the lives of Marla, Matthew, and everyone in the small town. So is this like straight up like Annie, like like the musical Annie, but just like a TV show twist on it? Kind of what it sounds like, but sounds good. I heard it's really entertaining. Um, Next one, I actually did start this, but I didn't really get into it. Money Heist. I have heard amazing things about this show, and this is probably gonna be the next one that I watch. It has like English dub overs. It's not actually in English. Kind of takes a while to get used to that. But as far as my cousin said, if you get past like episode five, you're hooked. And I only watched like the first two. So get to episode five and then you'll probably be hooked also. And you guys recommended and recommended and recommended The Queen's Gambit, which I've been seeing it on Netflix a lot and I do want to watch it. Set during the Cold War era, orphaned chess prodigy Beth Harmon struggles with addiction in a quest to become the greatest greatest chess player in the world. And I'm guessing it's really good because that sounds boring, but I'm, I'm sure they make it entertaining. And then the last one that I have on here is called Ratched. My cousins told me about this and they said it's really good. A young nurse at a mental institution becomes jaded and bitter before turning into a full-fledged monster to her patients. Oh, okay, so they were telling me there's like a serial killer and then she tries to help him escape and I think her name is Ratched. I don't know, anyway, they said that it's really, really good. So definitely check it out. Now I have some shows that I need to watch as well. But overall, my number one absolute recommendation is The 100. So good, the cast is amazing, acting amazing, storyline amazing. Every episode is so good. Oh. I just can't believe it's over. I'm so mad. But that concludes my annual end of the year Netflix binge worthy recommendations. So if you guys have any more recommendations, let's help each other out because uh, we all need shows to binge. Comment them down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed me, this video, my personality, want to see more of me, I've been posting every day. So make sure to hit subscribe and turn on those post notifications. And if you don't want to subscribe and you enjoyed the video, at least give it a thumbs up because that helps out a ton. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow.